The Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra, Roman Filiu, Jasper Dutz, Abdel Rahman Amer, Carly Carlos Maldonado. Written in 1948 by a 26 year old Cuban Irish German citizen of the world who was given an opportunity to write anything his heart could desire, and he wrote that masterpiece, and it featured Charlie Parker, Arturo Chico O'Farrell's Afro-Cuban Jazz Suite. <laughs> whose centennial year we started to celebrate on Thursday. Happy 100, Chico. <laughs> About three days ago, we got some terrible news. One of my heroes, uh, passed away suddenly, Letieres Lieche, the founder of Orchestra Rumpilez, and what a brilliant activist, warrior person. His 
He set the bar high, not just artistically as a genius composer, but as a human being, creating an orchestra and a school and giving all of it away because he was that kind of person. It's an inspiration to me. So this is Le Tiere Lieches Alafia.
Letieres Nieche, Orchestra Rumpiles. Rest well, Maestro. Rest well. This next piece I wrote um, for a recording I did called Familia. And I did this record with Chucho Valdez, the great master pianist from Cuba. And it talks about revolution. It talks about love of where you're from and your people and uh, struggling, struggling to understand where we're at, why we're at, and who we are. And so this piece is called Three Revolutions, written for Maestro Chucho Valdez.
Larry Bustamante. This next uh, piece of music is written uh, with a maybe not so subtle message. I always think I'm being subtle. My wife doesn't think so, though. She never thinks I'm being subtle. But the subtle message is this. You can make stereotypes, but it's not really, it's not really cool. And actually, the thing that people have stereotyped my people with is silly, because we got some bad shit. Excuse my French. <laughs> But that's the truth. So we're going to play a little game with you. We're going to play something that we call 40 Acres and a Burrow.
Ivan Renta. So I want to I want to try a little thought experiment with you. If you would go with me, please. We're up on the stage. You're in rows facing us. It's kind of pedestaled in a way. Some of us are good with that. I don't. The elitism thing really bugs me out. So I want you to go with me on a thought experiment. Close your eyes. And pretend we're on the border between San Isidro and Tijuana. Just close your eyes and go with me on this. There's stray chickens running all over the place and kids unsupervised. A bunch of folks break out jaranas, Mexican style guitars, and they start singing and dancing. And there is no hierarchy. We're all on the same place, except some of us are on the US side and some of us are on the Mexico side. But we're using the fencing to communicate. We're using the guards, the dogs, the chicken wire, the submachines, the automatic weaponry. We're using that to declare unity and community. And this happens every year at Fandango Fronterizo. People gather from all over the world and meet at the fencing to celebrate humanity. We were able to do this. We were able to go to this setting to celebrate humanity, pueblo, community, and love. And it's just an amazing thing. So I want you to just take a minute and you don't have, you could walk around. If you have a stray chicken or a dog, you want to talk to your neighbor during this piece or just sing or even if you want to dance. I, mean, I don't know. But I want you guys to just forget about where we are and let's join together as we would if we were at the Fandango Fronterizo. This is called El Maquetch.
¡Que viva México! This next piece we're going to play for you. It occurred to me there's just this beautiful reality in change and the process of change and going from stasis to activity, from activity to stasis. Nothing stays the same. Nothing. And if you think it stays the same, you're going to be brittle. That's a fact, right? So this thing, I decided to give it a name. I called it clumping and unclumping. You clump and you unclump. You clump and you unclump. Just recently we trumped and untrumped. We hope you enjoy this piece. It's called Clump Unclump.
name is Mitch. Mitch McConnell. know why I'm here. Donald is in Florida. Let's have dinner, Arturo. I like you. I wondered who was going to visit tonight. Because lately, it's just been family, family, family. I mean, I tell you that uh, the musicians that I work with, and the, my staff at the Afro-Latin Jazz Lines, that I consider them a huge part of my life. And now I have a huge room full of family, a huge room full of friends. <laughs> Rafi Malkiel, Mario Bilston, Abdul Rahman Ahmer. Earl McIntyre, Rachel Therian, Brian Davis, Seneca Black, Jim Seeley, Larry Bustamante, Jasper Dutz, Roman Filiu, Addison Evans, Yvonne Renta, Vince Cherico, Carly Carlos Maldonado, Bam Rodriguez, Kaysel Jimenez, my name is Arturo Farrell, and we are the Afro Latin Jazz Orchestra. And I've met, made some new friends in addition to that. I met a remarkable young man who is on death row in Ohio, wrongly accused of murder. And uh, he's become a light in my life. He's taught me about freedom from death row. A man by the name of Keith Lamar. And at our table, we have a book that I think you should read. It's called Condemned. Keith Lamar, you must find out about this remarkable human being and the way he's lit the world for so many people. We also have, of course, our Grammy Award winning I originally called it the Cornell West Concerto, but it became four questions. And let me tell you something about family. My life has been remarkably altered by this man. I'm, all of you have. All of you have. There isn't a single person in this room whose life has not been altered by this man. But the things he says, the black prophetic fire that he holds our feet to, he demands accountability, but he does so with gentleness and love. He's an inspiration to me personally and to millions of people. Please help me to welcome to the stage Dr. Cornell West. We're also welcoming to the stage a remarkable young pianist by the name of Andrew Andron.
blessing and what a honor and what a privilege to be on the same stage as the greatest Afro-Latin jazz orchestra in the world plays. Give it up for them, each and every one of them, each and every one of them. And then you've got the artistic genius and the spiritual giant. He's not just a member of the first family of Afro-American jazz and Afro-Latin jazz of Allison and Adam and Zach and his father, the inimitable Chico O'Farrell with Dizzy Gillespie. You all know what I'm talking about. But we here to, for remembrance, reverence, and resistance and resilience. We want to keep alive a great tradition, the greatest tradition of the species, which has everything to do with responding to hatred with love, responding to terror with a struggle for freedom, and responding to trauma as not a wounded herder, but a wounded healer. That's what this music is all about. And it's got everything to do with the caravan of love that the Isley brothers talk about. And then John Coltrane's love supreme. Yeah. Uh-huh, that's the groove. That's the groove that keeps things moving. Curtis Mayfield just called to keep on pushing. Soul to soul just said keep on moving. You got to be able to make sure that beat is connected to something bigger than you. And the love supreme for me begins at home. I'll never be the man my father Clifton West was. I'll never be the human being my mother Irene B. West was. Coming out of the chocolate side of Sacramento, Shiloh Baptist Church, Reverend Willie P. Cook, Deacon Hinton, Sarah Vaughn teaching me everywhere you Go. If the kingdom of God is within you, you ought to leave a little heaven behind. They leaving a whole lot of heaven behind. And Lord have mercy on the front row. I see my beloved, blessed wife too, leaving some heaven behind. Appreciate it, baby. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Indeed, 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 indeed. Play your horns. Lord have mercy. J.J. Johnson's echo. Jack T. Guard, Brother Rafi, Sister Mary Ellen, Brother Rocky, Brother Earl, remember Howard Johnson, oh, Eva, Brother Eva, oh, the memory, Ben Webster, Coleman Hawkins, Johnny Hodges, oh, Kenny Gear, Jackie McLean, Illinois Jacquet, Gene Ammons, so many voices, so many visions, play your horn, brother Ewan. When Adolf Sax created the saxophone in Belgium in 1848, he didn't know he was going to be so Afro-Americanized Africanized in the name of truth, in the name of beauty, in the name of goodness, in the name of for some of us the holy blow, 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 my brother. Oh yeah, brother, Ivy, brother Ivan, brother Ivan. Oh, just listen to him. Listen to him. Let that music soak inside of your soul, even the dark corners of your soul. It's human to human, person to person, soul to soul, and it's so soulful. And soul ain't nothing but the sharing of a soothing sweetness against the backdrop of a grim catastrophe. Let it saturate inside of you to keep you moving. And then there's W.B. Du Bois with four questions. And the first question, as a love for you, as a freedom fighter, as a joy spreader. What does integrity do in the face of oppression? In 
integrity, spiritual integrity, moral integrity, political integrity, artistic integrity. You notice, I didn't say cupidity, I didn't say love of money, I didn't say venality, selling your soul for a mess of cottage, a culture in which everybody's for sale, everything is for sale, the modification all the way down. I said integrity is what our vanilla sister Jane Austen called constancy, virtues on the move. Oh, my God, what a great tradition, what a great people. What is it about these black people that in the face of all of that tear, they don't create black versions of the Ku Klux Klan. Here come Martin Luther King Jr. Here come Fannie Lou Hamer. Here comes Ida B. Wells Barnett. Here comes Ella Baker. What is it about these people? It's not skin pigmentation only. No, I know some black gangsters and thugs. It's deeper than that. It's spiritual formation. It's ethical cultivation. It's courageous action. That's in part what this music is all about. It's not just superficial entertainment. It's the caring of your soul. It's the nurturing of your heart. It's trying to convince you to straighten up with any everyday people find themselves straightening their backs up. They're going somewhere because folk can't ride your back unless it's been. Can't ride your back unless it's been. You can't walk around with your back bent if you really take this music in. Cause this is about what it means to be human, what it means to be modern, what it means to be American, what it means to be black, what it means to be brown. It is a human thing all the way down. It affects people every color, every class, every sexual orientation, every national identity. It is a human thing and listen to me. Look at Brother Vince playing that very funky drum. Max Roach. Oh yes, Elvin Jones. Woo! Even Clyde Stubberfield from the James Brown band. Appreciate you, brother. You know what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Woo! Oh, there's Sister Rachel again. Playing that trumpet. Louis Armstrong and Clark Terry, Roy Allen, Clifford Brown, put a smile on their face. Let us never ever forget the great ones who came before, who constitute examples for us to intervene in a moment of such spiritual decay and moral decrepitude, obsession with the 11th commandment, thou shalt not get caught survival of the slickest and the richest Oh, how spiritually empty. Listen to the music. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That's why the boys had the second question. The second question. The boys speak to us from the annals of time. What is your question? What does honesty do in the face of deception? And age of lies that hide crimes, an age of mendacity that hides criminality. It could be drones dropped on innocent people all around the world. It could be mass incarceration regimes. It could be decrepit school systems and massive unemployment and underemployment. It could be patriarchal domination of our precious women of any color. It could be homophobic and transphobic degradation. All of these lose sight of the humanity that is highlighted in this music. That's the key. Yeah. That's it. Integrity. Honesty. It seems so simple. But they are so subversive in the days in which we live. But the gangsterization of the culture, the gangsterization of the world. And yet here come the music. Ooh, brother Bam, brother Bam, the 
putting a smile on Charles Mingus' face. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, a little Ryan Carter, a little, a little, a little Reggie Workman. Uh huh. What about Jimmy St. Gas? Oh, that's it, brother, bam, brother. And we got our brothers on the Congo too. Woo! Should we do a little thing, brother Cazell? I'm talking about. You listen to the rhythms from the rich African civilizations and cultures. The beat of life, the beat of the cosmos, the beat of the universe, the beat of your heart, the beat of your soul, the backdrop of all of modern music. Randy Weston taught us that. He's right. He's right. With all in the face of lynching, in the face of discrimination, in the face of degradation. Here come that joy. Here come that dignity. Here come that vision. Oh, what a people. What a culture. What a tradition. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Uh-huh. of the great W.B. Du Bois. What does decency do in the face of insult? Decency is revolutionary in a moment of overwhelming indifference to the suffering of others. The very genius of Hebrew scripture to spread that chesed, that loving kindness, that steadfast love, especially to the orphan and the fatherless and the motherless and the weak and the vulnerable. And here come a Palestinian Jew named Jesus. Said, oh Lord have mercy. To be human is to make sure that you are serving others and ending yourself to the least of these. That's what this music in part is about. Did oh my dear brother Andrew, I got to get over here. Not just because I know the black notes and the white notes working together, but he's working them in such a way. Brother Andrew, give us a little fast walla. Whoa, James P. Johnson and William the Lion Smith. Oh yes, there it is. Mary Lou Williams and Jerry Allen, Alice Coltrane. Little Herbie Hancock, McCoy Tyner, Red Garden, Herbie Hancock. Oh, he worked with Brother Herbie. Oh, yes, Brother Andrew, you working it? Oh, yes. Same in, same aim to touch us in such a way, to unsettle us in such a way to unnerve us in such a way that we connect the joy to courage, the joy to struggle, the joy to vision, the joy to never give in, never give up, never cave in. That's what the voice is. That's what this music is all about. Yeah. Woo! Indeed, indeed. Oh, yes, that is, that is, that is. Ah, uh huh. Just let it, let it flow. Let it flow. Oh, yeah. In the fourth one. 
how does courage face brute force? Yeah, play that song that my ancestors created. Play that song under slave conditions, spiritually free. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Sometimes it makes me want to tremble, tremble, yes. Were you there and they pierced him in the side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when Emmett Till's body was put in the Tallahassee River? Were you there when Brother Michael Brown Jr.'s body lay on the streets of Ferguson? Were you there when Breonna Taylor, our dear sister, Shot down in Louisville, Kentucky. Were you there when our dear brother George Floyd Jr. was murdered by the police? But in the face of all of that hatred, all of that tear, all of that trauma, here comes a people with a smile and a style, with a courage, a vision, but most importantly, with a love supreme that begins with a love of themselves that allows that chocolate love to spill over vanilla indigenous Asian Latin America around the world oh brother Mark Mark Jefferson and Charles Peterson here they know what I'm talking about that's the tradition that's worth Fighting for, sacrificing for, and doing it with joy.